Hey everyone, my phone has been blowing up today because of the research article that just came out, energy drinks associated with depression, anxiety, and stress. So I wanted to make this episode real quick because I want to put a stop to some of the conclusions people are leaping to based off of this paper. There are five problems I have with this paper based on the data that is and is not available. So I'm going to walk you through it. Ready? Let's go. Problem number one, correlation is not causation. The people that wrote this paper were very careful to call it energy drinks associated with depression, anxiety, and stress. Associated with, the cause of depression, anxiety, and stress. But this hasn't stopped some people that aren't really fans of energy drinks from leaping to the conclusions that this paper proves energy drinks causes stress, anxiety, and depression. It does not. It is associated with. And here's why this matters. Think about the people who drink energy drinks, people that I help all the time as Green Eyed Guide. Shift workers, first responders, sleep deprived parents, and small business owners with a nine to five and a side hustle. Those people typically have higher levels of stress, anxiety, and depression because of their life, because of their work that they're doing. So yeah, those people are also going to be people that are tired and turn to caffeine in the form of coffee or energy drinks. To help. Problem number two, I've also seen this um, um, I've also seen this among the news articles that are covering this research paper. This paper did not follow people from birth, okay? This data comes from a larger survey that followed people from birth, but that's not what this paper is about. This paper is about the change in stress, anxiety, and depression in the two-year period from age 20 to age 22. Now, here's why this is important. That's a very stressful time, right? When you're a young 20 something, you have to make a lot of big life decisions. So it's gonna be a very stressful time in your life. So that's my second problem. I would love to know how these energy drink users compared to people that didn't drink caffeine or didn't drink coffee or any you know, caffeine from any source, but that data isn't available. They don't make that type of context available in the abstract or in the news articles that that talk about this paper. And that's a problem because we need to understand if people that drink energy drinks have a much greater stress or anxiety or depression than the other people also going through these stressful times in their life. And that data is missing. That's problem number two. Problem number three, how much stress are we talking about here? An increase in stress isn't the same as overall stress. This paper says the stress scores increased two points, only two points. And from what to what, it's not clear. Here's what the paper does say. <clears throat> For the whole sample, participants who changed from being non-energy drink users to energy drink users had an average increase in stress scores of 2.3. So that's just the increase in score. That doesn't tell me from what to what. And here's why that matters. In the depression, anxiety, stress scale, the, the survey that they use to measure the depression, anxiety, and stress of these people in the survey, anything less than 19 is normal to mild. So if your stress score increased only two points, is it over 19 or is it not? Is this a problem or is it no? Not. They didn't put that data in, in the paper, in the free part of the paper. I'd have to read the whole thing to tell you. But again, news articles that are taking this research and running with it aren't looking at this data. And that's a problem because it affects, it limits our ability to actually help people who drink energy drinks. So that's a problem. How much stress? We don't know. We just know it was an increase. Is it a problem? Eh, I don't know. Problem number four. Now you noticed in the last in the last bit, in problem number three, I only talked about stress scores. So you might be wondering, what about anxiety and depression, the other parts of this paper? Well, ladies, good news, you are fine. Here's what the paper says. <clears throat> Males, but not females, who changed from being non-energy drink users to energy drink users had an increase in depression, six points, anxiety, four points, and stress, three points. So women drinking energy drinks, seem to be fine. No meaningful increase in depression or anxiety. And you're part of the general, you know, two point increase in stress that I mentioned in the, in the last part. So yeah, women relax. You've got this. And right. problem number five, I could do this all day. Guess what I'm going to say? How much caffeine? 
How much caffeine were these energy drink users? How often did they use caffeine? It is not the same thing having one Red Bull every time finals comes around as having a can of Bang Energy every single day. The, they do not have the same effect on your brain or your body. So this article and the way this article is being reported in the news media is yet another unfortunate example of where all energy drinks are treated the same. Forget the, forget the energy drinks in disguise for a moment, the Kill Cliffs, the Marquee, the Vival Energy Tea. Like, forget the energy drinks that don't look like energy drinks. If you just look at the stereotypical energy drinks, Red Bull, Monster, Bang, and Rockstar, even those are completely different. They have different caffeine amounts. They have different effects on your brain and your body. So you can't just count number of energy drinks. You have to look at how much caffeine. You have to look at how often those energy drinks were consumed. And as far as I can tell, that data is missing, which means we can't make uh, we can't make assumptions based on the effect of energy drinks and someone's depression, anxiety, and stress because we don't know how much caffeine they were drinking and how often. <sighs> In other words, it would be really helpful helpful for me to understand how this two-point in stress increase in the energy drink users compared to people that get their caffeine from coffee or people that don't drink coffee or caffeine at all. I would really like to understand the context of this increase in stress against everyone else. But again, that data isn't available. So we don't know if it's caffeine in general, maybe the coffee drinkers had similar increases in stress, or if it's just the energy drinks, which means it would have to be other ingredients in the product. We don't know this information, and that's because this research paper isn't focusing on that, again, which limits our ability to do anything meaningful with this data. So those are just my initial thoughts and reactions to this paper. Again, the full paper is not free access. I have to buy the paper to read the whole thing. So I am, what's the phrase, Optimi optimistically skeptical, skeptically optimistic. I'm hopeful yet skeptical that some of this data I care about is actually in the paper and just didn't make it into the free part, like the abstract and the methods and the results. But this data is so important, especially for news media's, uh, you know, for news outlets that are covering this research as like it's, you know, some conclusions you can make about how energy drinks affect us. It's not. And I hope that this episode proves that when it comes to news articles like this, when it comes to research like this, there's always more context. So I hope this is, this is another exercise that helps you strengthen your BS meter when it comes to stories about energy drinks. Now, if you found this episode helpful, I would really appreciate a like and a subscribe and a follow and maybe share it with a friend or two. I really appreciate your support of my work. Thank you for taking the time to watch this all the way through and I hope you have a wonderful day. Deep breath. We got this, we got this. All right, take care.